celebrity and uh, that is wonderful. Um, and one of the things is uh, his principle was that one should never teach by example. I mean, that's kind of treason to the scientific and to the mathematical mind. You first state the laws and, uh, and, uh, and they explain everything and perhaps if you have some dumbbells in your class you may deliver an example, an application for that. <laughs> well, uh, I myself uh, uh, never had learned this way and I found that, that many people, or actually few people, are that way. Most are helped tremendously if you give them, introduce the subject with a few examples and then come the laws and then they make sense. So uh, my message here is don't believe everything he says, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, and, and I also found that uh, Esker was really tremendous as far as mathematics and, and principles went, but he, that was at least my feeling, he didn't have enough feeling for the, the troubles that engineers experience, and the engineers are actually the people who, who carry the world through the desert, you know, the others just uh, paint clouds. So, uh, once he visited uh, us at ETH in Zurich and I was very proud to show to the master my work and explaining some of the difficulties I encountered, being well aware that there would probably be difficulties if, which he understood if he had cared about, but I was sure he wouldn't care about them. We had uh, one of these rather unfortunate machines uh, CDC call with an instruction set, now it's called RISC, but certainly not particularly well suited for our tasks of implementing ALGOL and higher level languages in an elegant way. And I tried to explain to him with the difficulties I had been fighting with and uh, the concessions one had to make and so on. And, uh, well, he, of course, uh, had a somewhat haughty look, you know, and then he said, well, yeah, I didn't expect anything else uh, from, a, from a genuine Swiss Puritan. <laughs> and then I, I, I was a bit puzzled, but I knew enough that I wouldn't take this as exactly a compliment. <laughs> so, so I asked him to explain, and then he said something like, well, the Puritans are people who, who have learned to love their miseries. <laughs> Thank you. The last set of comments in this section of the program are from somebody from Amsterdam, which seems all that well suitable, and Caldwell. I will not talk uh, about Amsterdam, but uh, better about Eindhoven. And I will talk uh, tomorrow, I have some more time, uh, about uh, my personal uh, things that happened with Eska. Uh, only th three short remarks. In 1984, you left Eindhoven. And the first remark is, it was terrible that you left. And the second one is, and that's clear from tonight too, it was the right thing to do. And the last thing is, you succeeded in not leaving us. Thank you very much. You may have noticed that it's raining. In fact, it's raining quite hard. And we don't want to send you out into the rain to get wet, so we'll go off the program. There are some people who we haven't heard from and seen, and we should. First, Lynn Pierce. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a PhD candidate in the department here and also a member of the Tuesday Afternoon Club. 
I was honored to be asked to make a few remarks tonight, and I should say that some of these remarks have been anticipated by other speakers, but that will, in context, seem a very delightful thing. So, anyone who knows Edsker W. Dykstra well has almost certainly met another very special person, a woman with beautiful blue eyes and a marvelous smile. No tribute to Edsker would be complete without a recognition of his wife, Rhea, and her contributions to his and many other lives. Maria C. Dijkster de Betz completed her formal education at the RK Lyceum voor Meisjes in Amsterdam, and I should mention parenthetically that I've almost certainly mispronounced that. But since my primary sources on the pronunciation of the Dutch language were not supposed to know I was giving this, <laughs> you just have to bear with me. She then went on to the Mathematical Center in Amsterdam, where she continued her mathematical training as part of her work as a calculator and later as a programmer. It was during her employment there that she met Edsker, and showing a spectacular combination of good taste and courage, she later became his wife. <laughs> Since that time, she has been many things to many people on multiple continents. In a personal capacity, she is wife, proud mother and grandmother, colleague, companion, and friend. She's a master craftswoman, especially in the art of quilting, and shares this art with others as a beekeeper for the Quilters Guild. Her accomplishments in the craft are illustrated by her completion of a difficult and elaborate quilt in the classic Mariner's Star pattern. And her personal charm is exemplified by the fact that she gave the finished piece away to a friend. And in addition to all of this, she has continued to use her mathematical talents to support Nessus Edgar in his work. Thank you, Rhea, for being yourself and for all you bring into many other lives. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saluting Rhea Dykstra, our own Yellow Rose of Texas. Is wonder. Oh, oh, oh. Well. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> they can stand up. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, thank you. That was, that was wonderful. I'm Ben Kuypers, chairman of the department. And before I start saying a few more remarks about Edsger, let's see, where did Edsger go? <laughs> he left? Oops. Ah, OK. Or to get rid of water. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> so let's see if we can find Edsger. Um, in the meantime, what? Indisposed at the moment. Okay. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. <laughs> That's right. So, one thing I would like to do, and, um, it's a shame to do this with Edsker out of the room, but um, I would like